Hi, this is episode number 44 of Highlighting the Best of Youth Sports. In this interview, we were honored to have class of 2027 Ali Beydoun, a young quarterback excelling in football. Not only did Ali join us, but we are excited that his personal coach and retired NFL veteran Bruce Gradkowski joined us along with Ali's father. There is so much value in this episode from so many different and great perspectives. We can't wait for you to listen. Before we get into today's full episode, we want to say thank you again so much to everyone that has listened and shared the show. We just surpassed 3,600 downloads and we couldn't be more excited to see the continued growth. If you haven't done so yet, please go to Apple Podcasts right now and give us a rating and review. It literally takes less than 30 seconds and enables us to grow and reach more people. Get new guests and improve and bring you more content. Highlighting the best of youth sports is brought to you by our company, Numbers Don't Lie Productions. We're here to provide you with a highlight video editing resource to support your youth sports journey. We created a simple, quick, and low-cost process that helps you create highlights that document the sports journey and showcase your athletes. We have featured thousands of athletes in over 40 states and 15 countries. Schedule a free consultation and learn more today at www dot numbers don't lie dot biz now let's get into this episode welcome to highlighting the best of youth sports where we bring you insights from top athletes their sports journey and those positively impacting the youth sports community if you're ready like we are let's go Welcome, everyone. Uh, today, we have a very special episode. Uh, we have class of 2027 football and quarterback standout, Ali Beydoun. But we also have uh, with him his father, Samir, uh, and his quarterback coach uh, will be in this episode as well, Bruce Gradkowski. You're going to find a lot of fun things about Ali's journey uh, and a lot of uh, words of wisdom as well uh, from Bruce and his journey. So with that, we want to uh, welcome Ali and Samir and Bruce to highlighting the best of you sports. How are you doing today, Ali? Good, good. Good. Ali, let's start with you taking a few moments to tell us just a little bit about yourself, uh, how old you are, and where you're from. All right. So my name is Ali Baidun, class 2027. Uh, I grew up in Toledo most of my life. And okay. And what, uh, Ali, what sports do you compete in? Football and basketball. Football and basketball. And if you had to choose one, and we don't want you to choose one, but if you had to, which one would you choose? Football, no question. No question about it. Okay. Basketball is just my side sport. Okay, but you're you're really good at it. We've seen we've seen the highlights. Yeah. We we've we've had you in some videos. So how long have you been playing football? Since I was like five years old. Okay. Okay. And how about basketball? Basketball, I started in six. Yeah, first grade. Okay. Ali, what do you enjoy most about playing football? The camaraderie with my teammates. I, I just like hanging out with them, practice, just having special connections with them. Absolutely. And, and, and that's going to follow you a long ways throughout your life as well. Uh, tell us about the current, uh, you're in flag football right now. It, it's that time of year. Tell us about your current season and um, what have been some of your biggest highlights so far this year? Yeah, so we're the uh, Jets, and we're 3-0. Yesterday, we came off a big game versus the Browns. And, um, yeah, we were down 12-0 in the first half, came back. And I, my, our defense really held up, so I really like that. And, um, yeah, our season has, has been going really good. So what, what was the final score yesterday? 27-26. We won by one point. All right. And ha what happened uh, on the last touchdown? Yeah, so the quarterback was dropping back for the other team, and um, there's a wide receiver in the back of the corner end zone, and he went up to get the ball, and he dropped it at the last second. Okay, so you guys had the lead, so your defense definitely stepped up. Now, yeah. how, how did you guys get that lead? Did you throw any touchdown passes? Yeah, yeah, I threw four touchdown passes. Oh, wow. And how, how many touchdowns do you have so far on the season? <sighs> Um, six the first game, four last game, so 14. Like 14. 
Nice. Nice. Yeah. Now, Ali, so you've been playing probably close to six, seven years now for football. What has been your best memory or, or one of your biggest accomplishment in all of that time that you can remember uh, in football? The one that's really stood out to me is uh, my first season, just, just strapping on the pads and just like getting my helmet, right. It's just, it just, that season really helped me. I wasn't really that good, but that season really helped me get a feel of the game. Okay. And uh, Ali, as a quarterback, what do you think is your biggest strength right now as far as your skill set? My athleticism, getting away from dodging away defenders and making splash plays. Okay. Now, we, we know you work with the quarterback coach, uh, Bruce Gurkowski, and uh, we're going to hear from him a little bit later. But uh, what have you really taken from Bruce that has uh, helped your game and where, where has he really helped you develop the most? Probably the mechanics. Like when I first started with him, I was okay on my mechanics, but he's really helped me improve on my game. And my mechanics have been on point these past uh, few weeks. Okay, great. Now, Samir, we're going to sh- shift gears here a little bit. Uh, what grade are you currently in and uh, where do you plan on going to high school? I'm in sixth grade and um, I'm going to St. John's for high school, St. John's Jesuit. Okay. And why don't you tell us uh, your big long-term goals for football? My big long- long-term goals is to start as varsity QB as a freshman, win state championship as junior, senior, And then eventually make it to a D1 uh, college and have a very successful year and maybe win the national championship and then go to the NFL, win a Super Bowl, at least one Super Bowl and go to the Hall of Fame. I love it. I love it. Dream big, dream big. And, and, you know, I'll I'll tell you a phrase and and you may have heard some similar things, but uh, the phrase I tell my kids all the time is, you know, your, your dreams are so big, but how do you eat an elephant? Do you know how to eat an elephant? No. One bite at a time, right? Yeah. So set those small goals and keep going after it. Cause I, I can already tell you're developing uh, and your game is growing so much already. So tell us a little bit more about school. What type of grades are you getting? I'm getting all A's 4.0. Um, yeah, I've been really doing good in school. I've been paying attention and have to keep your grades up if you want to be a really successful athlete. Absolutely. It, you, you know, it's, it's important that those grades stay as high as possible. That way your options don't diminish. You, you want as many options as you can and move, moving forward. What's your favorite subject in school? Um, Besides math. football. Math, probably. <laughs> math. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Now, how, how important, and I know your dad's been teaching you about this, but how important is school uh, for your future? School is very important for my future. If I don't keep at least A or Bs, then I'm probably not going to get accepted in any college. You have to keep your grades up if you want to get accepted into a college, get an academic scholarship. Absolutely. Now, Ali, we know you're a hard worker. You're extremely focused on your sports, but uh, outside of sports, what activities and hobbies do you enjoy doing? I'm really just outside all day with my friends. We just play baseball, front yard baseball, basketball, football, rider bikes around the neighborhood. I'll come in, play, play video games for like 30 minutes to an hour, then just go to bed. Okay. Very good. Now uh, I know your, your dad um, manages your social media. Um, What's your, take on social media and, and how, how can athletes best utilize it? And, and are you involved at all with the social media right, right now? Well, I'm not really involved with it. I'm just seeing it build up kind of my dad's doing a great job with it. And um, I recommend for athletes to start off, start off social media because it can really help you to recognize and get out there as an athlete. All right. Excellent. Now, what do you like about being an NDL nation athlete? I, I like how I can get more recognition from other people and get my name around name around the country. And yeah, they're doing a very good job with me. Okay. Lately. Now, is there anything as we move forward, as you guys continue as a, as part of numbers don't lie. And as one of our athletes, is there anything that um, in your eyes uh, you'd like to see us help you out with more? You guys are doing a great job. I mean, okay. There's, there's no, nothing that you guys can help me more. You guys are doing a great job. I really appreciate your work. 
Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Ali, I'm going to transition over to your dad for just a few uh, questions and then we'll come back to you to do the rapid fire at the end. Okay. Right. Mr. Beydoun, how are you? I'm doing great. Doing great. Thanks for having us today. A absolutely. Thank you for your patience. You, you've been very supportive on, on the podcast so far and uh, kind of been sitting through. So I just had a few questions um, j just for you. What advice do you have for parents that are navigating, um, you know, the challenges that come with balancing sports and school and, you know, raising your, your kids? Well, uh, in this day and age that we're, that we're living in, you know, there's, there's, there's no shortage of, of challenges as a parent. Um, I would say just, um, you know, finding that balance of motivating, but not over pushing. So, um, you know, there'll be times where, you know, Ali is, you know, wanting to go, he's gung ho, he wants to do. It. And me as a parent, I got to know, is that the most responsible thing for him right now? Does his, do his legs need to rest a day? You know, he's still developing. He's still, muscles are still gaining every day and managing his body. Um, and, you know, also focusing on the mental part, the mindset, you know, um, we're, you know, I'm a tough parent, you know, I'm, we're, 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 we're pretty strict with Ali. Um, I think it's working out great. I mean, the kid is, uh, he has his faith first. I mean, uh, he prays five times a day. We're Muslim. We, we, we believe in our faith and Ali is a very faithful kid. Um, so he believes everything comes, you know, through that, um, school is right up at the top of the list after, you know, after that. And, he, you know, he's, we're very, very proud. I'm, I'm equally as proud, if not more proud of his, you know, academic, uh, accomplishments as it, as what he does on the field. I mean, he's gotten he's not gotten an A minus yet in middle school, so it's been straight A's, four, three straight four point ohs, three quarters. You know, um, the good thing about it now is they they, you know, it's different than when we were kids. With the technology the way it is, they can log on at any time and see what their grade is right now. Right. So if he drops to an A minus, I think he actually just dropped to a B plus in reading or something. I told him, listen, go, go talk to your teacher. Tell me, you know, what can I do to get it back up to an eight? That's my standard. You know, it's been tough, you know, recently with Ramadan and some other things, some challenges. Uh, but again, he comes back, you know, a week later and is like, I'm back up to an A now. So he, he's very um, uh, in tune with what's going on. And me and his mother both are extremely involved. The easy, the easy thing for a parent to do is let your kid go play video games for, you know, several hours because that's a babysitter. The tough thing to do is to keep them engaged. You know, what are they, what did you do today? What did you do to, you know, to improve your faith? What did you do to get smarter in the classroom? What did you do to get better on the football field and, and keeping that, but, but at the same time, balancing that with not burning them out and making them just kind of resent the sport. Yeah, absolutely. And congratulations to you and your wife. You're raising great kids and you can just tell by talking to Ali and, and uh, everything you just said is what's needed more, I think, with the family units, uh, you, you know, in society today. And uh, you're right. It's a, it's a different world than when we grow, grew up in um, and uh, having the benefit of supportive yet structured parents that are providing that leadership is, is extremely important. Uh, what advice do you have for parents? Uh, and you do a great job with this for managing or monitoring their, uh, their athlete social media. Um, <laughs> get ready to do a lot of work. That's the, yeah. that's the advice yep. I got. No, <laughs> but in all seriousness, um, I think the main thing is, um, you know, people are so into the followers and the likes and everything else. I believe it's more of a, my whole reason that I started Ali's on social media, me and my wife had a discussion about it and it started probably when it was about 10. So it's probably a couple of years now, you know, I want there to be one spot where, you know, when he's getting recruited as a junior or senior in high school for, if a coach wants to ever question what this kid's been working on, what his whole life's been about yep, when yep. it comes to sports, go back and look from when he was 10 years old, or even at five, there's a, there's a story I got in there from when he was five, the journey started at five, he's in the gym working out doing football drills at five years old. I mean, I mean, I don't, I, you know, that's from like way back, but you know, uh, it just, it's just a documentation of the process. The other main advice I would give to them is don't let the kid get caught up in it. I tell Ali every day, I'll focus on your social. I'll focus on your Instagram. You focus on being good at football. You focus on being a good kid, good athlete, good student athlete, you know, be respectful to your teachers. One of the posts that we put on there for him was when he first started in sixth grade, a couple of weeks into the school year, the principal and three administrators from the school show up at our front door 
and they knock on the door and, you know, my wife knew about it. I didn't know about it. They wanted to surprise them and they give them a leadership award. They're like, you, you've you been a, a great leader in school. I mean, those little things right there, that's where I want the focus to be. I'll manage the, you know, the, you know, the back end of, of things where it comes to dealing with the numbers don't lie and dealing with these other people and sh- giving that support and the financial and just kind of overall parental support. You focus on doing the things that are going to be in your life. So when a kid will get caught up, we know they'll start looking on social media. Is, it's got its advantages, which sports wise, I think there's a, a lot of huge advantages for social media. But then there's also a lot of disadvantages if you're not on it. I mean, for a while he had this at his account. He wasn't even allowed to have Instagram on his phone. So, I mean, recently that's changed. We've let him get on it, but there's limits. We set limits to it. So that's kind of, that's kind of where we're at with it. That, that's great. And, and again, you do a great job with, with his social media. So you, you kind of touch it, touched on um, the videos and stuff. And I want to commend you because you're probably a, a better video editor than I am. And uh, that's the core of our business. So you, you're, you, you do an excellent job with that. And, and you, you talked about how the videos and uh, w- when we speak with Bruce, he, t- he talks about how videos play a role in the sports journey. And you've obviously, you mentioned the documentation and that's, that's core at why you're doing everything you are with the videos is having that document and that journey um, in one place. And that's really the core of what our business does. It's, it's, it helps organize that. So where did Numbers Don't Lie Productions fit in for your journey and Ollie's journey and you guys as a family? Where, where does Numbers Don't Lie fit in? I mean, we, we just, we've done a lot of due diligence um, on a different kind of similar companies out there. Um, and we just like that, you know, um, how it's a family run organization, the, the conversations that we had back during his basketball season, uh, kind of stood out to us. And, um, you know, uh, I could put it, you know, I could put it, I could put a highlight video together, put it on his page, but it's, it's nice to see somebody else kind of appreciate and kind of them pick their best place. Like I, this is what, you, you know, you guys do over there. Um, and do very professionally and very well. And when you guys are selecting certain plays that you think are top notch, they may be different than the ones that I'm seeing. So it's just good having that perspective um, and putting the stuff together and, and highlighting them. And, you know, even some of the motivational posts and stuff that are on there that are not so far, you know, this is a spotlight athlete or, you know, a brand ambassador or whatever it is, you know, there, there, there could be a couple things on there that, Hey, listen, you know, this, you know, just, a, just a motivational, you know, motivational Monday, quote or something like that i mean so we're constantly you know and then and then with the social media i'm always sending stuff to ali you know through his text or whatever i'll just send him a post i mean so that we're so that we're kind of on the same page so i think you guys are doing a great job it's fit very nicely for us we're proud to be a part of it uh we try to we try to go out and support the other numbers don't lie athletes and comment on their on, on their posts and on their pages show them you know likes and one thing i've learned about you know, running a, you know, running, you know, his Instagram page from is the more love you show, uh, you know, online, the more love you're going to receive. Right. Absolutely. Now, now you mentioned earlier, you, you know, when you first started and reached out to us at numbers don't lie that you did a lot of due diligence. There's a lot of different companies that do a lot of different things. And, and we were pretty upfront with you saying, here's what we don't do. And here's, yeah. here's what, what we do is the core of just the video editing. And then we, we consistently get stuff out for you. What, what do you think sets us apart from that? Th- those others that you looked at for, you know, when you were doing that due diligence, what would you tell others that may be looking for a, um, someone that produces highlight videos for their athletes? What would you tell them about numbers? Don't lie. Well, I say, I say you guys, number one, you did a great job of being honest and upfront. Um, a lot of, you know, a lot of these companies out there, they'll basically, they just want to take your money and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of a savage world out there. I mean, you don't know what they're going to do for you. What not going to do for you. You guys have done everything that you said you're going to do. Um, you've not, you, you didn't put uh, the expectation level at a, you know, at, you know, um, unachievable point. You guys were honest. You were upfront. You told us what you were going to do. You doing what you say you're going to do. Um, and like I said, I, I, I just kind of had a rapport with you and, you know, you're kind of a father in a similar uh, situation as, as what it was, what I was, it seems like a family run organization. And, and we like that. We like, and we like growing with, you know, people that are maybe not the biggest, you know, uh, in, in the industry and, you know, and you guys, you put a lot of focus on Ali. We saw that even in some of the, 
you know, a couple of like with the, with the hat and some of the other gear, you know, I've, I've highlighted that on your page and just, we, we're appreciative of it and we feel the love and we, we feel that, that you guys enjoy having Ali as one of your, um, as one of your athletes. So and that's important to me as a father and, and it's important to him and his mother. So, um, that's kind of, that's kind of where we're at with it. And, uh, like I said, it's, it's not, you know, and, you know, some people can't edit and they don't know what to do. You're, you're there for that. You know, some people can edit like myself and have done little, you know, they've had practice cause I do it a lot, but at the same time, it's still nice having someone else's view on things and, and what, and what you do this for so many different athletes. What do you guys see that, that maybe I don't see, or maybe, you know, what you want to put out there for them. So it's just, it, you know, all the way around, we're happy with numbers. Don't lie. I love the, I love the name. Um, you know, he's probably too young to, to, you know, for the Jay-Z quote, you know, but it's just always, a, you know, I've always, it's always stuck with me. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't lie. Yeah. You know, so it's, just, it's, it's simple. Um, and, you know, it's, we at the university of Toledo, I played with Bruce and it was, it was, when I got there, the thing I loved about it the most is I, you know, I was a defensive player. I played defensive tackle, but it was, we had a production board and everything was based on numbers. If you had an assisted tackle, that was one point. If you had a solo tackle, it was two points. A tipped pass was four points. A sack was five points, interception, seven points. So there was a numbers a system for everything that happened on a field. So at the end of the day, you'd, you'd also have a grade for whether you did your job or not. And then if you produced, I mean, you had a tackle or a hit, a, you know, a big hit, whatever it was, there was a point system for it. So if you think you're better than the guy that's starting in front of you, guess what? Well, how many points does he have on a season? How many production points do you have on a season? And guess, numbers don't lie. Yep. If he's getting more playing time than you, you can still break it down and do an average. Say, hey, coach, hey, you know, this guy's playing twice as much as me, but I'm getting the same production as he is. If I, if I, if you split our playing time equally, I guarantee I'll be producing more than him. And, and it gives you that leverage. And I used that to be honest, as a player, I used it. I wasn't shy. I'd go to my coaches. I'd say, listen, you know, look at my production. Somebody might run a faster 40 time than me, or they could bench press more in the weight room than me, or they're loud and rah, rah in the huddle or whatever. But every time I'm on the field, I'm making plays and the numbers don't lie. They're there. The numbers, you can see the numbers. The show will be right back. But we wanted to let you know that highlighting the best of youth sports is brought to you by our company, Numbers Don't Lie Productions. We're here to provide you with a highlight video editing resource to support your youth sports journey. We created a simple, quick, and low-cost process that helps you create highlights that document that journey and showcase your athletes. We have featured thousands of athletes in over 40 states and 50 countries. Schedule a free consultation and learn, learn more today at www.numbersdontlie.biz. Welcome back, everyone. We're about to start the second half of the show. We'll begin with Ollie's rapid fire questions and we'll move right into the, our interview with his quarterback coach, Bruce Gredkowski. All right, Ollie, you ready for your rapid fire uh, questions to end this up? Yeah. Let's go, dude. All right, we're still recording, so I think we're good. What's your one big goal for the next year? Win, win the championship, uh, middle school football, seventh grade football, win the championship. Okay, is that tackle or flag? Tackle. Okay. Very good. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received from a coach or parent? Whoever, whoever you're facing up against, you better think you, you, you have to think you're better than them. You can't like whoever you're facing up against, if he's bigger than stronger, all, it all matters about your, your heart. Confidence. Absolutely. Agree with that. 100%. Who's your favorite athlete and why? Russell Wilson, because he's number three and I just love his play style. I just, I, I love how he can just dodge defenders and just throw dots down the field. Absolutely. We're a huge fan uh, of Russell Wilson as well. I do wish he was on the Cowboys, but uh, uh, I'm a huge <laughs> fan uh, anyhow. And I'm, I'm okay with Dak too. Okay. Where can people follow you on social media and find out more about your special sports journey and everything you're doing on the football field as well as the basketball court? Uh, my social media is all lowercase baydoon underscore baller underscore 409. 
you can see where uh, I started Let's and all my highlights on Instagram. We're just going to jump right in and we're excited that we have Ollie's quarterback coach here and he's a former uh, NFL quarterback for several different teams. I'll let you tell, um, I'll, I'll let him tell you a little bit about himself, but we're excited to uh, welcome as well, Bruce Gradkowski. Bruce, how are you? Good brother. Doing good. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. Bruce, for those that may not be too familiar with you and your, your career, why don't you just tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got to this point and then what you're doing with, uh, you know, training youth athletes now. Yeah, you know, I grew up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, my wife and I now live in Toledo, Ohio. Uh, Toledo, the University of Toledo is my only Division One full ride, full scholarship. I had a, a, a few 1AA schools coming after me, but uh, Toledo was my only D1 scholarship. And uh, yeah, I was fortunate enough to, to be a three-year starter at Toledo. I got drafted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the sixth round in the 2006 draft. Uh, by crazy John Gruden. So I learned a lot of good football from him. Uh, and, and I started 11 games as a rookie. So it really helped propel me to have a an 11 year NFL career, you know, and with that, just like anything we do in life, you battle adversities. You know, I, I after starting 11 games as a rookie, I get benched. They bring in Jeff Garcia. I backed him up. And then going into my third season, I get released. And then it wasn't until the end of that, my third season, I signed with the Cleveland Browns to finish that season. Um, and then the Browns released me after that year. I signed with the, the Raiders. I played two years with the Raiders. I had uh, one of my best games uh, when we went back home to play the Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, we beat them, and uh, that was exciting. And then I tore both my MCLs in the same game. Yeah, I was fortunate enough to, you know, when I was with the Raiders, we beat the Steelers at Heinz Field in 2009. That was my best game, threw for 300 yards, three touchdowns. So I spent two years with the Raiders. Um, then when I was a free agent, signed with the Bengals, backed up Andy Dalton for two years. And then I finished my career with the Steelers, backing up Big Ben uh, for the last four years of my career. Uh, and I finished in 2016. So uh, it, was, it was a pretty cool run. And it goes fast and, um, you know, tore my left pec, my left uh, posterior labrum, right posterior labrum, labrum, AC joint, rotator cuff. So dealt with a lot of injuries and stuff, but just like anything, battling through that adversity. And, and then Bruce, so you've now transitioned to uh, training youth athletes. So how has that transition been? Uh, obviously, you know, from what you just told us and those that have been following your career, you've got a ton of experience and, um, and, and now you're able to give back and actually, um, you know, give to youth athletes that are looking to get to that next level as well. How have you transitioned into that and what are you doing with youth athletes? Yeah. I mean, you know, moving back home after, uh, after I finished my playing career, I just wanted to, to give back a little bit. You know, I, I played uh, football with, with Ali's dad, Samir at Toledo. Uh, I always know his mindset, what he believed in, how hard he worked. And, you know, so we connect on that same type of level. And he reached out to me. And, you know, so so for me at this point in my, in my life, it's, it's, man, there's been so many people that, that have helped me on my journey. And how can I share my knowledge, my experience, uh, to the younger generation that's trying to just pursue their dream and their passion. And, you know, so it was a great opportunity for me to start working with Ali and, you know, other, you know, quarterbacks around town, but uh, just, just to help. And it's not even on the field X's and O's, but it's the, the, you know, adversity you'll face and, you know, whether it's football, school, life, I mean, you're going to battle things and face, you know, obstacles, no matter what you do. And it's having the right mindset and the right, you know, approach to it. So it's, it's been awesome. And, you know, it's, it's rewarding for me because when you, when you work with a guy like Ollie you, and you see him progress and continue to get better, it's like, wow, uh, like, am I really like helping him? You know, because, but he's putting in the work, you know, and I tell all, all the kids and Ali, especially like he, he's exactly what you would want uh, in a quarterback in a, a young kid striving for his dream because he, he puts in the work, you, you know, kids can come and train with me and we can work out. I could give you all the advice, 
But at the end of the day, if you don't go home and put in the extra time and put in the work yourself, you know, it's not going to pan out to the way you want it to. I mean, you can't just trust working out a couple of days a week with me that you're going to turn into an NFL quarterback. I mean, you have to do the work behind the scenes. And, you know, that's what I did growing up. And I was never in the house. I was outside playing basketball, football, baseball. You know, I was working on my footwork. Even if I didn't have receivers to throw to, I was working on my timing, my release, my footwork, getting quicker. And, you know, I see that a lot in Ali and how he approaches the game already. And, yeah, he's young, but, man, he, he loves it. He works his tail off. And sometimes, too, uh, I have to tell him, man, it's, it's okay to take a break here or there. So, uh, yeah. But it's been rewarding for me to work with such a, a, an awesome guy that has a work ethic and all. He, like, just like his dad, you know. So uh, it, it's really cool to be a part of that and just, and just help the young generation on their path. Yeah. And that's, that's great advice. And, you know, I uh, got to work uh, as a a young athlete at baseball camps with Tom Hicks, who coached at USC. And one of the things that has always stuck to me to this day is if an athlete's ever going to get to the next level, and it is hard, they have to have three things. And one of them, they have to love what they're doing. They have to love the game. Um, Two is they need to find, you need to find the right coaches. And and that's where this whole situation with you and Ali is just um, bringing back that memory. And then the the third one is you have to practice. You have to put in the work and those three things right. are going to give you that best opportunity to get to the next level. So uh, absolutely. I agree hundred uh, percent with what you're saying. Um, so you've been at the highest level. You, you, I know you have high expectations for Ali, um, but there's a difference between working with a 12 year old and working with a high school athlete, a college athlete, and even pro athletes if you could give some advice to families and parents that are on this journey, you know, maybe they're at Ollie's level where, you know what, this kid's got something special, but at the same time, he's 12 years old. What should the expectations be, you know, going through this whole journey with sports? I mean, that's a great point because, you know, I see it a lot now. Like I grew up and I was three sport athlete, even more so. And, that helped me on the football field. You know, basketball was my first love, but, you know, that helped my athleticism on the football field, just like football helped my toughness on the basketball court. So I, I felt like playing in multiple sports always helped me. So I'm an advocate for that. I mean, you know, I'm just a believer in just continue to do everything now while you're young because you want to have fun, right? I mean, I even look back, I started playing padded football when I was eight years old. And I look back and I'm like, maybe I wouldn't have minded to wait until I was 12 or 14 um, because, you know, did, did it wear me out? Did it drain me towards the end of my career? I mean, I don't know, but I'm just saying that the first and foremost thing is you got to have fun. You have to enjoy it. And it's hard as parents, you know, I've, I have three kids, a girl, Lily, she's eight, Roman and Lincoln, my two boys, five and three. So it's hard because you want to see them achieve. You want to push them. You want them to continue to get better. But at the same time, I truly believe the number one thing is pursuing what you're passionate about. Yep. I mean, anything in life, if, you're, if you want to succeed at it, you have to follow what you're passionate about. Not follow the money, not follow the job title. It's, it's follow what you're passionate about. Because at the end of the day, if you're truly passionate about what you're doing, you'll find a way to succeed. I mean, you, you'll have the the... Um, perseverance to overcome obstacles or injuries or being fired from a job or continuing on that path of what you want to become. So my number one thing is always pursue your passion. I always say number two, only uh, focus on what you can control. You, You know, sometimes we worry about what's this coach think of us or why am I not getting enough offers right now? Or why is this or this? Well, you can't worry about all that, right? You could control what you could control and that's focusing on yourself and approaching each day with the right attitude, the right work ethic and putting in the work. So, um, you know, I, I, really, because those things have helped me tremendously in my career. And I always say set goals, you know, you got to set some goals and I'm not talking, you know, I want to play in the NFL. It's, it's where are you right now? You know, and for a guy like Ali, you know, where he's at his stage, it's like, look, you got to get A's and B's in school. Absolutely. You got to be a good kid. You got to be a good kid for your parents, your grandparents, aunts and uncles. You got to show respect to them. 
Um, and, and so it's it's not only just on the field stuff. And of course, set some goals on the field. Hey, I want our team to win the flag football championship. Like I think he just did, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, and things of that sort. I want to throw, you know, how many touchdowns while I'm playing in flag football. That, those are awesome goals. But I also think too, so it's it's goals of where you're at now. And then goals where you want to be like, hey, I want to go to high school. I want to start as a freshman or I want to start as a sophomore. I want to get a division one scholarship because I, I did set those goals along the way. And then all of a sudden I look back and I'm at Toledo and I'm like, oh, man, that dream to go to the NFL. That's that's actually a goal now because I'm a starting quarterback at a division one school. Now that's realistic. I, I love that perspective. And I, I love when we're, we're able to talk with coaches and, and those that really have um, some, uh, credentials behind what, what they're doing and what they're teaching. And, uh, it's great advice that uh, I know everyone listening to this podcast is going to be able to benefit from. And I know Ali has before I get into some rapid fire questions with you, anything you want to add about, uh, just the work you're doing with Ali and, and things you guys work on as, as at the quarterback level. Yeah, I mean, I, I think first it's, you know, because Ali is still young and he's still developing and growing. So your his strength is going to continue to develop. So sometimes with younger athletes and quarterbacks, especially, they try to push the ball because they don't have enough arm strength to just kind of throw with their arm and their body. But that so we work on a lot of his his footwork, his mechanics. And his transferring of his weight, learning how to use your body as you throw, learning how to use your hips. Because I was a guy, I never had the biggest arm. I had enough arm, but I I count on my athleticism. I count on using my footwork, my timing, my rhythm, a good sound release. So those are the things we're working on. And I think Ali, is he just gotten so much better over the last year of just the, the fundamentals of throwing the football. You know, and, and I've gotten better. It's helped me be able to communicate it, right? Because I started thinking too, I'm like, ah, oh, man, like how can I tell someone how to throw it or the right release or how to use your body when maybe it comes natural to me or, or I've just been doing it so long that you don't, you don't think of the little uh, details to help someone that's just starting out in their journey. Um, and I'm trying to work with that with my son as well. Is like, where do you start? So with Ali, the thing that was great with him is, He's just a, a natural athlete. Like he could just, you know, which is awesome with the league he's playing in now. He's a natural instinctive football player. So now how can we kind of hone that in, get better with the, the details of footwork? Now how can you use your, bo- your body, the transfer and the weight, and then his release? You know, we, we got to make sure that release is sound. We got to make sure he's, he's having the right release as he continues to grow, develop, and get stronger because then his arm will get stronger. Then those throws will become easier to him, but it's going to feel even that much more natural as he gets older, because now it's uncomfortable, you know, and that's the thing I love doing with quarterbacks is putting them in uncomfortable situations, whether footwork, whether release, whether body, um, because they'll adapt and, and then it will eventually feel comfortable. So, I mean, Ali's doing a great job. It's, you know, it's, it's like a coach's dream, you know, a, a kid that puts in the work, he loves it. He wants to be there. Um, and like I said, sometimes I have to t- tell Ali, hey, it's okay to like take a break. It's okay to go play with your friends at the park or have some ice cream or, you know, right. <laughs> and uh, because he loves it so much, but it's, it's, I guess, a good problem to have. He's so focused, but I think his dad's a little tired from him waking, waking him up at like 530 <laughs> every morning to wake up <laughs> or to work out. <laughs> yep. Well, that's okay. As parents, we know we never sleep a full night anyhow once our kids are born. So (laughs) So we're going to be tired till we get to the grave now as fathers. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So I've got some just, these are just rapid fire questions for you. Um, Quick answers, just off the cuff. uh, And then we'll we'll let you go. Bruce, how how can athletes best utilize social media in their sports journey? Um, I I think Ali and his dad's doing a great job. You know, you know, it's, it's just starting it. It's just, you know, nowadays with social media, I mean, you're, you're, you're your own business, really. And I remember when I signed up with, for Twitter, I, it was in 2009 when I was with the Raiders and my wife thought I was crazy at the time. Like, what is Twitter? Like, why are you even, I said, I don't know, but people were on it and <laughs> maybe marketing wise, like football could help. And so, you know, it, it's cool. And especially now starting at a young age, it's, it's perfect, you know, and uh, because, 
you want to get your highlights out there. You want to get the exposure uh, and, and show because now coaches can very easily scroll through, find stuff, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I mean, all these other, I mean, on huddle now and, and find highlights and videos. And that just gives them a tip of the iceberg. And then you have to get to know the kid and stuff like that. So I just, I think it helps. Um, it's, it helps your platform just to start somewhere because, uh, I think we're all our own business now, and that's just going to be the trend we continue to go on with all these awesome podcasts like yours that that we're talking on now. It's just it's cool that, and, and we're also just trying to share information, right? We're all gathering information off one another. So I think you have to utilize it, and especially with parents. I think uh, Samir does a great job with Ali because Samir like helps control the social media, yep. and especially at a younger age, you know, when do you? truly let your kids take over that kind of stuff. We're, we're trying to figure it out. Who knows when our kids are going to try to force us to get them a phone, yep. but it is the world now, right? So we want them to engage and know how to use it and be familiar with it because look what happened with this last year with COVID. Everyone's working from home. You, you have to know how to work the computer, have to do Zoom calls, have to know how to get work done being virtual. So I don't think it's going anywhere. So I think the social media stuff's awesome for everyone. Yeah, I agree. And us being, you know, the core doing video editing, we tell all of our clients and the families we work with, we're not the end all be all the video and, and even the social media, it's a piece of the journey. But the, the, if the kid's ultimately going to get to that next level, they got to put in the work. Um, but the, but the video is definitely a part of it. And, and we've seen this last year with COVID. It's definitely a bigger part of it uh, just to get your foot in the door and to, you know, be, be a discussion starter for it. So uh, the name of our company, it's a, it's a fun sports name. It's called Numbers Don't Lie. Uh, what does that phrase mean to you, Bruce? Yeah, numbers don't lie. I mean, it's, it's factual, right? I mean, you really can't argue numbers. If a guy threw for 300 yards in a football game, he threw for 300 yards. If he threw three interceptions, hey, he threw three interceptions. Now you can look into those numbers. I think it helps you get there, right? So numbers don't lie. It'll help you get gather information. But then to me, in a football sense, is you got to watch the film because a lot happens behind the numbers as well. Right. And I think, too, uh, not only it tells you where you need to improve, but it, all, it also gives you some affirmation of here's where I'm doing good and keep doing whatever it is I'm doing to make that number so good. We want to keep doing that. So um, anyhow, I, I, the kids love it, especially, you know, the name of our company. It's really what made us popular in, in the branding for it. So I, I appreciate that. Bruce, who, who inspired you as an athlete? You know, growing up in Pittsburgh, I was always a fan of Dan Marino. Um, he was a Pittsburgh guy. He played at Pitt. Um, yeah, I, I was a fan of the Steelers, but man, I love the Dolphins because that's where Marino was. His dad and my dad worked together to Pittsburgh Post Gazette. Um, and of course, too, when you start, man, it's your dad. I mean, my dad and mom got me into, into sports, but they helped me with the right mindset um, to put in the work. And I think that's the biggest thing. And that's why I just, I think back to how my mom was, she would always, um, I was always concerned that I wasn't going to get tall enough, that I wasn't going to get over six foot tall or even get to six foot. And she would always tell me, we'd leave the doctors and they're like, oh yeah, he might get to six foot. I don't know. Now I'm like six, one, six, two. So I didn't crush it past six foot, but I got there. Yeah. And my mom was like, look, size height doesn't matter. It's what what's inside matters. Yeah. And I learned that. And I, well, I witnessed that throughout my career because I even look back now, I, I didn't have, I played with guys that had more, more talent than me. I played with guys that were bigger than me, but for some way I just, I would outwork them. Um, there was definitely grace involved in, in luck, a part of the process, but I put in the work and you attract those things. And uh, so it, it, it worked out well, but I, uh, I do feel like, you know, you got to worry about what's inside and, and you can make some things happen. Excellent. What's the best piece of leadership advice you've ever received? Um, you know, I learned a lot as I was bouncing around from team to team, to be honest. And what I would always, the approach I would take is, is lead by example. Um, and, you know, because I'd go into a different locker room with different, you know, teammates. And I didn't want to just start talking. I wanted to prove by my work ethic 
by learning the offense, knowing what to do. So it goes back to control what you could control. And I could control how, how much time I put in, how hard I work. I could control being on time and having a good attitude. And I could control what I know in studying the playbook. And those were things I wanted to control. So I think as far as that, it, it helped me as I bounced around the teams. And I even tell young guys now, quarterbacks, I mean, whatever position, leaders in businesses, is look, there's so many good leaders out there that are all different. So lead your own way. You don't have to be someone else. You just be yourself. Lead your own way. There's great leaders that are outgoing, energetic, and then there's leaders that are quiet, more reserved, more to the point, more direct. I mean, you can lead many different ways. I just always encourage kids to be themselves and lead their own way. And I can't let this interview in without you telling me one or what, what's the biggest thing you took from John Gruden? Man, well, there, there was a lot of late nights trying to learn that offense. And <laughs> I remember during training camp one time, I was up to like two in the morning trying to learn this one play because I didn't want to get in the huddle with Joey Galloway, Mike Allstott, Anthony Beck, Cadillac Williams, and not be able to communicate the play or not remember what he just called and, and I'm fumbling my words. So it was this one play that kept me up at night and it was Indy right 10, X short, fake 96, power king, naked left, X slide. <laughs> so that, that's just a part of Gruden's uh, terminology. But, you know, I, I learned a lot from him. He's a good coach, a good teacher. So I'm appreciative of those uh, moments. Outstanding. Okay, Bruce, uh, where can people follow you on social media and just uh, learn more about you, uh, everything you're doing with the NFL, uh, still in college? I, I believe you're helping out with radio on college as well and everything you're doing, where, where can they follow you? Yeah, so I'm on, I'm on NFL radio, Sirius XM every Thursday and Friday um, on channel 88, Thursday noon to three and Friday 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. And then I, I oversee all the uh quarterback grading for pro football focus. So I do that during the season, um, grading every NFL throw. Um, and then, yeah, you can find me on Twitter, bgradkowski5, and on Instagram, bgrad05. And, you know, hit me up if you need anything or want to talk ball. And young QBs, let's get it. All right. Thank you so much, Bruce. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I know you're busy and to take uh, time out of your schedule to be with us. And, and uh, I know uh, Ali appreciates everything you're doing with him. So thank you very much. Yeah, yeah coach, no, for sure. Thank you for coming. Yeah, brother, you guys sure you need anything else from me? No, nope, I think we're good here. And this will, uh, depending on how long it takes me to edit, weave this in and out, it'll be out in a couple of weeks and I'll, I'll, I'll be sure to tag you in everything we, we post. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks. I was going to say, send it to Samir. I'd love to see it and uh, share it. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Right. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. Bruce. Thank you, Bruce. Thank All right, Bruce. Samir. Yeah. See you, Ali. We hope you enjoyed this episode of highlighting the best of youth sports. Be sure and subscribe and please help us reach more people by leaving a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform of choice. If you or someone you know are interested in learning more about Numbers Don't Lie and what we do, what programs and services we offer for athletes, and how to get your athlete involved, be sure to visit numbersdontlie.biz. Until our next episode, go out and win the day and never miss your opportunity to be great. Thanks for listening to Highlighting the Best of You Sports.